All right. It is that time every fortnight that we have one of our regular features here on the platform. And I know a lot of you are of an age. Of an age. Uh, you've got some money, but you're of an age. What am I going to do with it? Will it last? Uh, it's time for... You can't take it with you when you're gone, so how do you make the most of it while you are here? It's time for Your Money Matters with Sam and Dieter from Harness Financial. Got... Oh, I always forget that last... Doom, 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 doom. Guys, great to have you, have you back in. Um, and I know this is a pretty big part of your business and increasingly with my friends, retirement planning. What is retirement planning? Well, that's the big question. We all talk about it, but no one actually defines it. So I think today what we're going to do is really get down to what it means without using all sorts of jargon and uh, trying to complicate things. It's very simple. It's basically a gap analysis. So gap. it's a gap analysis of where you want to be and where you are now and how do you get there. Mind right. the gap. Yeah, mind, mind, the gap. mind the gap. All right. Um, all right, okay, walk us through that in, in, in simple terms. All right, keep you at... Uh, and just obviously, as we were saying, it's a general advice and uh, yeah. nothing specific in here. But the first thing we really need to understand is what is the income goal when you stop working? Because everyone talks about property, about investments and assets. Those are relevant if they don't meet your income need. So what is the actual money you need coming into your account on a regular basis to maintain your lifestyle? Uh, but if you don't know what that is, then the chances of getting there are very slim. So we've got to assess... And I guess, too, your income needs change if you're not working. Your lifestyle changes quite drastically if you're retired and not working, too, I would imagine. Potentially. Do yeah. you want it to? That's the question. Ah, okay. All right. Is it cheaper? Uh, here's a qu genuine question, guys, and you might know the answer to it because um, you got me thinking now. Oh, by the way, anyone, if you want to ring in and ask a question to these guys, is it cheaper... To be retired, well, not cheaper, is you can live on less when you're retired than when you're working or not. I would have assumed that, but uh, assumption is the mother of all stuff. Yes, up. yes. <laughs> so when you're retired, especially these three decades we often refer to, which is the go-go years, when you're fit and healthy and you can do stuff, mm -hmm. you've got the slow-go years where the hip starts, you know, starts yeah. to creak. Uh, and then you've got the part where you can't really do anything. because the no-go. Yeah, you kind of, you know. <laughs> we weren't going to say it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It's, it's the end of the line side of things. And uh, in the go-go years, you've got to remember every day is Saturday. Mm. Um, yeah. So if you really want to go out there for coffee every day or go over the white wrapper or do all sorts of things all the time. Cruises. Yeah. Cruises or, you know, it's just, it's expensive time. Take the grandkids yeah. on cruises. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Spoiling the children. Okay. And, and you say there are two phases... Pre-retirement and post-retirement. Is pre-retirement slow go and post-retirement no go? No, no. All of those are post. Oh, okay. Um, Pre-retirement is about work, work, work uh, for a clear purpose. Yeah. So knowing how you use your income, uh, how you spend your money, what is your surplus, how do you allocate that in the best possible way? Mm. Uh, is it property? Is it investments? Is it a combination? All of these products need to be aligned to your goals mm. and there needs to be a plan around them. Most of us just sit on a treadmill. Yeah. We, we run that treadmill day after day and then one day we fall off and there we go, what do we do now? Right. And people do generally go, what, what do we do now? Yeah. How yeah. common is it do you think people get to the end of their working life and haven't thought about what the plan is or haven't planned for it? Too common. Yeah. Too common. Most Kiwis will get to the end of their working life without enough planning to retire to the level and lifestyle that they want to retire to. Right. Juicy, you're worrying hell out of me now. Hey, in yeah. terms of minding the gap and assessing the gap, um, just because it's a conversation that people are having a lot these days, KiwiSaver, yeah. how does that come into the gap? As, and can, can, it, can it be on its own someone's entire retirement planning strategy, Dieter? Well, not really. Well, if you think about... Um, if you're earning it's your, your income over your lifetime, so that's 100%. Yeah. Uh, what about 30%, 40% of that's going to tax? Mm. Uh, and then you've got another sort of 6% uh, in total going towards your Kiwi save if you're doing the minimum. Mm. So, what are the chances that 6% of your income are going to replace 100% of your income at retirement? I'm no math genius, but probably yeah. not good. No, 
not good. In fact, uh, totally in, I think it's totally inadequate. Yeah, so there was a rule back in the day of the 80-20 where 20% goes towards the future and 80% today's of mm. today's living. Um, but then you take of tax and tax from your POYE to your GST to your fuel tax. I mean, we're probably sitting 40 to 50% wow. of your income. So you're working almost half a year yeah. for money that doesn't come to you directly. Yeah. So... So yeah. every every dollar counts. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. We've got to call on uh, Ray. Ray, g'day. Do you want to ask the boys a question? Yes, please. Um, well, I'm very, very close to retirement, and we have enough money and enough assets, but I wondered if we came to you, what would be the process of looking about where we put that money and assets? and the approximate cost of doing a plan? Great question. Yeah, very, very good question. Uh, so first of all, I'm probably too cheap at the moment as part of our <laughs> launch special. <laughs> so I'm charging the, the amount of uh, $1,500 to actually do a plan. Uh, right. What is involved is actually getting really clearly about what you want to spend and how you want to spend it. Um, and mm -hmm. creating a system where that's coming into your account and you're actually just enjoying it without worrying about the total, num the total amount of capital. Also, we need to figure out what do you actually want to leave as a legacy? So what is the plan around your state? Uh, is, are your wills up to date? Is everything set up so that it all goes according to your purpose and will? And then when it comes to actually allocating assets, uh, my philosophy is risk before return. So I prefer strategies that are highly diversified where you're sitting with 6,000 plus underlying companies um, so that the only way you lose your money is if the world ends. And <laughs> yeah. And then the second part of that is really the structure. So we know that markets sort of fall over every five years for a short period and then they recover. So we have to navigate volatility and you do that by having the right structure in place. So you need to have a good amount of cash. A cash has got its place. And that is what you use to absorb the volatility um, over time without sacrificing the long-term growth. So, and the focus then is about enjoying life and doing everything you want to do mm. Mm. Um, without worrying about if this happens or that happens. Um, because if all the free markets and all the capital markets in the world go down, then property here is not going to be a help. Nothing's really going to help <laughs> except maybe baked beans and water. We have um, too much cash, but a terrified to make that um, jump into um, diversified um, funds for the fear of losing it. Another great question. Yeah, yeah. And, that, that is, and it's something that I think I have the benefit from coming from a, a high-risk country where we have less trust in the local environment and markets and property. So if you imagine every company in the entire world on every stock market and you have a share in that versus a property, for instance, or cash in a single economy, single country. Single bank. Single bank. That for me, and the fact that you will underperform and, and lose value through inflation over time, guaranteed. So I think from a risk perspective, we need to separate risk of loss from risk of volatility. Volatility is a real thing. Uh, markets go up and down. They don't always go up in the short term. But over 95 years on the SP 500, it's been a 10% per annum average. Um, right. And it's irrelevant of what companies are the top, whether it's Facebook or anything like that, because they'll be replaced by something in time. What we're really banking on is that the market as a whole and all the companies collectively will meet the need required and deliver a profit doing it, which includes the banks. That, when you get that money from the you know diversified funds that you've put into, mm -hmm. is that normally, it's normally higher than the the interest rate less tax from a bank, but is it already have been taxed and that money comes to you, or do you still need to um, pay extra tax on it? That's actually an incredibly good question. Man, so, so many good questions. Oh. Well, well, Ray, are we on the meter now or not? It's my <laughs> question. <laughs> but, but it actually... I'm, I'm working yeah. out whether it's worth me spending my $1,500. Well, well, I'll tell you what, Ray. Uh, the first consultation is free. The initial <laughs> meeting. Uh, so it's 100% worth it. 100% worth But can you answer that real quick? Because it's a good one. Yes. So I did analysis the other day between property and managed funds. And, and property operates the same as term deposits where 
your income is your interest or rent less costs less tax so you're limited to uh, what you can actually get from a from a liquidity point of view if you've got a managed fund you your tax is on the dividends it's tax on the interest components there's no capital gains in australian new zealand companies and the offshore companies have a very beneficial system of two lower options every year but what you draw down is not in itself a taxable income and I normally work wow. on around a maximum of 4% drawdown on the total values, which is always higher than what you'd get out of interest or rent. And it's not a taxable right. number. Great. All right, Ray, you're going to okay. get hold of the boys then? Yeah. Don't forget, free initial FIS consultation. Okay? Thank you. Good Thank on you. you. Thank you for your call. Thank you. And don't forget, guys, when Money Matters is on, you can call in. And I've got some texts here. Do you mind? Yeah. And look, I thought this, because it seems like such a sugar hit. Rod asks, are reverse mortgages still frowned on, frowned upon? Another good question. Mm. So I've looked at it for a number of clients, and for the right situation is, is a good option. Okay. So, for instance, the, the cost to actually take care of someone, if you've got a family home and you don't want to go and move into sort of a tiny little, you know, retirement yeah. unit... Uh, you can actually ac access some of that capital and use it in your lifetime. Right. Um, the benefit of that is that ultimately it comes out of your estate when the property is sold. Yeah. If leaving an entire legacy to your children is not the most important thing, or if you don't have oh, children, don't yeah, 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 yeah. Then it's a way of actually having the use of the asset and liquidity, uh, and you don't actually have to pay it back in your lifetime. So y there is an interest cost, uh, and there's a tiered scale of how much you can access depending on age. Mm. But at the old end of the scale, you can access 45% of the value of the property. Mm. So enjoy it. Enjoy what you worked for and, and mm. bought while you're there. Yeah. Guys, I also want to ask, I know a lot of people later in life move into retirement villages or homes who have different ownership structures for their units and limitations as to who you can sell to or what happens to the property when you die or pass. Mm. Is that the sort of thing you can also you guys advise on as well? Because I know a lot of people in that situation. Absolutely, and golly, isn't it a scary thing um, when you're at that age and potentially you don't have much family around you, um, trying to decide what should I be doing around this purchase? I remember um, when my my grandmother went through that situation. It was it was scary for her because the ownership structure in some of these situations is very strange, hard to get your head around. We do give advice. You've recently given advice to some clients around that, eh? So, like, in, in everything, think about the bigger picture. Mm. So, start with your estate planning mm. and yeah. go, well, what is this property worth when you do pass on and how is it yeah. going to impact what you want to leave as a legacy? Yeah. If it doesn't materially impact that, then then it's a non, non-question. Yeah. Then you it's know, about lifestyle and is that going to give you the lifestyle you want? Yeah. Um, and the other thing I've seen with clients is if you want to make those decisions, don't do them at 80 years old. Yeah. Um, right, okay. The mm. shock of moving is often over. An accelerating mm. factor towards decline in health. Yeah. Um, going younger, make a lot of friends, get yeah. involved in the, the community. Yeah, um, yeah, that's interesting. And, and as you said, planning. Yeah. 80 years, make your decision at 80 because you're under stress or they're older stress. But that's not planning. No. That's panicking. Yep. And as you said, this the, you know, the segment today retirement planning. So it really is actually, you know, I'm, I'm 59, I'm going to be 60 this year. I've got to start planning, right? But, you know. Do, do you have your enduring power of attorney arranged so that a wow. decision has to be made at 80? Yeah. Uh, and you've got dementia. Yeah. Um, it will be made in your best interest. Yeah. Yep. It's so important. We, we always make sure that, uh, that we've referred our clients on to yeah. a lawyer. Yeah. I just want to remind people, do not take financial decisions based on the discussion we're having today. But um, if you want advice, um, Harness Financial, provide it. What's the best way for people to get hold of you if they want more? If they're like Ray and they're sitting there, I think, I think, I think you closed the deal with Ray. Looking forward to speaking to you, Ray. www.harnessfinancial.co.nz for insurance advice, Sam on 02733 and for investment and retirement planning advice, 0210-268-7955. And that's Dita. Yeah. <coughs> Just one other question, because I know you two guys have your own, you know, specialities uh, within Harness Financial. Do your uh, insurance 
do you need to change the way you look at insurance and, and risk when you retire as well? 100%, yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, one of the my pet peeves as an insurance advisor is I hate seeing people in their 50s and 60s um, paying insane amounts on insurance premiums and not having their retirement sorted. You know, mm. it's it's an indictment on financial services industry in New Zealand if you get to 70 and you've spent all this money on insurance, haven't claimed and also have no retirement planning. Right. So you need to match your insurance planning to you, your retirement and your investment planning. It should be organic, should change over time. Um, ideally, in, in older older years, you should have high excesses, bringing the premiums down, be prepared to wear a bit more risk yourself, that sort of thing. All right. Um, yeah. Guys, I always worry when I, I lose sleep after, after you come in. Uh, I just want to remind people, if, if you want to uh, reprise this session and Money Matters, uh, we put it up on the YouTube channel in front of all our paywalls so you can watch the boys on YouTube and you can go out and think, do I need to talk to them? Uh, so the Harness Financial uh, Money Matters uh, program is on uh, streamed on YouTube um, so that uh, you can get the wisdom of, of the guys. Always good talking. So, Sean, I just have a quick question for you, yeah. just to emphasise one thing. It's the psychological nature of retirement. Yeah. If you did not have the platform... Mm. What would get you up in the morning out of bed? Oh, jeez, I don't know that anything would. I, uh, I really look. I really don't. I'm a workaholic. There's just no doubt about it. So Sorry. when I th when I think retirement, I think um, place by a river with a dog and a fishing line. But I think that would drive me crazy within two weeks, to be honest. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. And that's for me. I think it's not the financial challenge. It's not having purpose. That scares the hell out of me, mm, yeah. you know, because I'm not a lotus eater, believe it or not, you know. Retirement yeah. is a novel concept. Yeah, yeah, it is. And I'd rather not retire. But you want to be financially free. But I want to be financially free mm. to keep yep. doing, to mm. keep working at whatever, you know, yeah. gets me. And we'll get there eventually. Yeah. Um, all right, thank you so much. That is uh, Money Matters. Mm. Your Money Matters with Sam and Dieter from Harness Financial. To make the most out of your money, visit harnessfinancial.co.nz.